Well, to explain the One Identity Manager API, I very often love to use a specific, very simple scenario, which allows me to export data out of the One Identity Manager database. Therefore, I use the person table. But last time I did that, I got the response from the audience, why the hell I'm using such a senseless example? Because to export person data to a CSV file using the API is one of the most senseless and most expensive ways to solve the scenario. This is true and because of that, in this small video, I like to show you some other ways to solve this scenario as well, far away from the One Identity Manager API. First of all, there is the way to export CSV data using a Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Here I can just use select statements to get a result set and this result set could be exported. The advantage is it is very fast, but you need very specific permissions you normally should not have in a productive environment, which means you are allowed to use SQL to access your database. Because of that, this is a scenario that should typically only happen in a dev or in a quality assurance environment and only by very educated people who will do that. Nevertheless, it is not really comfortable because you typically get text files back and you have to replace the tab separation or the space separation by semicolon or comma to get a comma separated file. Another way to handle the problem is to define a view. From a security perspective, this is a better option because you can permit a specific service account directly to the view, and then you have only to find a way to get the data exported, for example, using a SQL tool. Another group who could be interested in data are the data admins or supporters or power users. They often use the manager GUI and an identity manager, there is a CSV file generator implemented, could be used for this purpose. The manager GUI is typically not used by business users and it's only used by project members, data admins, supporters and power users. And so this is only an option for technical specialists. To support the business in Identity Manager, we do have as well several CSV exporting options. One of them is to generate CSV reports in the web portal. Each table there could be exported as a CSV file, which is very easy to use for the business. Another way to do that is that some specialists are creating a report and this report could be subscribed. During the report subscription, you can as well the type of the data you like to get and CSV, it's an option there as well. If you want to automate something in Identity Manager, for example, to get on a scheduled basis CSV files, there are several options as well. One of them is, for example, to use a process with a very specific CSV export job. It is very easy and fast to implement to export data to a CSV file. Another way is to use the rich featured synchronization engine in Identity Manager. The synchronization engine is typically used if you want to export or import CSV files or both. But here the amount of time to configure the CSV export is a little bit higher than just to generate a process for an export. Because of this, to use the synchronization engine is typically an option if you want to export and import content data. Last but not least, and this is what I show in my example, you can as well use the API to create a specific script which allows us to export data into a CSV file. This is typically a very senseless way to do that because it is one of the most expensive ways to solve the exercise. But again, in this specific video, we don't like to talk about how to export person data into a CSV file. We want to show you how to use the API. And therefore, I'm using this example because everybody in the world is able to understand what the export of a CSV file is and the scenario to get person data, for example, exported to a file. Now let's start with our script developer. Before I can start to insert some code lines into a script, the first thing I need is a script. And to create a script, I can just use the code editor to create a function or a procedure. One problem with that. And this is later on, I have to store something in the database. And to store something in the database, I need stuff that looks like this. This is a very specific type of text that tells the system debugger later on, if I store this section, that all code between this green section and the next green section 
gets stored in one record in the identity manager. It is not too bad to create that as well. If I just copy these lines of code and to edit these lines a little bit so that they get different keys and different script names displayed. Nevertheless, this is something where you can make mistakes. And so I show you the best option, which is our recommended option to create a new script. Therefore, I run the complete code and I press F5 to start the script execution. As typical, if I start the execution of the system debugger, I get the login mask. I have always to log in because this is part of the standard behavior of this tool. Once I'm logged in, I can see all the scripts on the left side and I am able to create a new script. Therefore, I step to scripts and say create new script. Now I can make the choice. If I want to start with a public sub, which is a procedure or a public function which is a function. The difference is the public function will return one single value and the public sub, it's just a number of code lines. For my CSVs file example we talked about, I like to create a procedure, especially because the CSV file is not just one value that comes back once the script is executed. And so CCC as prefix for something which is customized and what you should always use in your custom installations have to be completed with something that explains what the script is. And this is a person CSV file export. Make sure that there are no spaces between the characters and no special characters used. All the rules you need to fulfill if you work with vb.net are the rules you have to consider as well if you start building script names. I press OK. I get a reload. And as we learned, I have always to say, yes, reload all. Once this is done, I can jump to the end of my customer scripts file. Here we are. And here I will find my new script. You can as well see that there is a very specific header and this header will later on help me to store that specific script. To show you that, I like now to store this script in the database. Therefore, I can use as well the system debugger. I press F5 again. I get the login mask again. I sign in. I should be able to see my new script. Here it is. And I can just save this script into the database. I use scripts, save the script to the database. It's a very small script, as you can see. I can as well assign a change label if this is necessary, but I can as well add a description. And so let's enter a specific description. With that description, I'm now able to save the script. I can add that script to the database. And the system tells me that this script doesn't exist, which is what I expect. And with the yes, it will be created. I can create it as a locked script, which then will be not considered during the compilation. But I don't want to do that. Now it is saved. If I now look in the object browser, I can find this specific script. I go to scripts. I may be searching better for all scripts starting with CCC. And as you can see, here is my person export. And of course, it is a very short script, just showing three lines. The next thing to show is to get a script back from the database. For example, your colleague was just developing this specific script. The modification was stored in the database. And your copy of the script locally on your machine, it's now outdated. To get the new or the modified script, I can select the script here. I can step to scripts. I can say load scripts. I can see the script as it is. You can see in addition to that, I get now the complete comments displayed and I can save it in my file. This is the way to get the script back. Another way is to download all the scripts from the database again, what we saw at the begin, but this will replace everything on the basis of the code that stands currently in the database. Once my scripts are downloaded, I can just close the file and form again, and I have to reload everything. And as you can see, even my comments are now inserted in my specific script code and could be edited here as well if I like to do this. Now I'm ready for code development. 
One more short note about scripts. There is no reason to store any half-developed work in the database, especially because all your scripts are as well stored as files on the workstation where the Visual Studio was started from. Important to know is, once the script is fully finished, how to store it into the database and maybe how to reload work of your colleagues so that you can, for example, extend the work. It is up to you when you start to store something, but we heavily recommend to store only full finished and full tested work.